More now on our top story, the peace deal in the Philippines. The agreement with the Moro Islamic Liberation Front took 17 years to reach. Al Jazeera's Anita McNaught explains what the group wants and why it took so long for both sides to reach a deal. The conflict between the Philippine government and rebel groups fighting for self-rule has been going on for 40 years. It's killed over 150,000 and displaced millions. The island of Mindanao has had a Muslim population since the 15th century and there's been an autonomous region for Muslim Filipinos since 1989. But the government model there failed because of corruption and political infighting. Rebels who wanted more autonomy continued to fight because the leaders of both sides could not build trust. That changed at a meeting in Japan in 2011 when the Philippine president, Benigno Aquino, met the leader of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, al Haj Murad Ibrahim, for the first time. The meeting was heavily criticized because it was seen as an appeasement of the rebels, but it was in hindsight a breakthrough that led directly to the peace deal. The agreement should bring peace to the south, a newly created region. Bangsamoro will have more autonomy, much greater control of its own taxes and resources, and its own police and legal system. We can start conceiving ourselves as a country that is not divided by religion, by ethnicity, or by uh, uh, discrimination uh, of one group against another group. But there are still rebel factions that are not satisfied with the deal. They want outright independence, a complete split from the Philippines. They're potential spoilers, as are any serious political setbacks in the road to implementation. And our main task right now is really to balance the expectations of our people. I would consider what we have achieved now as the best legacy that we can hand over to the next generation. And our appeal to them is that they, 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 they would value it, nurture it, and improve it. All fighters belonging to the front are expected to hand over their weapons and return to civilian life, joining the police, for example. No one expects this to be a straightforward process. Anita McNaught, Al Jazeera. Let's get a view now from Christian Herbelsheimer, the director of uh, the Philippines and Colombia programs at Conciliation Resources, an international peacebuilding organization based in London. Good to have you with us, sir. After 17 years, then, a peace agreement has finally been signed. Is that an end now to the conflict, or is this just the beginning of a process? Well, what it is, is essentially a significant milestone in a peace process. A peace process does not end with the signing of an agreement, and an agreement puts an end to the armed confrontations and sets the foundation for um, major structural transformations, which obviously is a longer time endeavor. So what are the main challenges on the long road ahead? I'm, I'm thinking particularly about the number of weapons that are out there. Well, I think there are short-term challenges and long-term challenges, but they can be summarized in um, security, governance, and trust. Um, weapons is one of them, and actually um, one of the um, peculiarities of the Philippines is that the law allows people to carry weapons. So it's not a matter of full disarmament of the more Islamic Liberation Front. It's a matter of registration of their weapons. But that is a problem. The arms proliferation in hands of civilians and in, 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 in many hands, and that will be a security threat for the long and the short run. And, and, and at the same time, of course, um, governance, um, transition from armed struggle to politics for the MILF will be a major challenge. And finally, um, trust, building trust among communities that have been divided for decades is also um, a significant challenge ahead. Is there good reason, do you think, to hope that a lasting settlement and true peace for the southern Philippines uh, with stability can be achieved? I'm, I'm convinced. Um, look, this is probably the most significant peace agreement in the world since the peace agreement in Nepal back in 2006. Um, both the government and the more Islamic Liberation Front have learned the lessons from failures in the past. So they are much better prepared. They're open 
to an inclusive transition process where all stakeholders, social, political, economic, will have a role to play. And um, there is a support mechanism of national and international monitors and advisors that will be on the ground, including us in conciliation resources. So um, the prospects for change, uh, the foundations are strong, are good, and challenges are inevitable in any peace process. But um, there is a reason for hope for a better future. Christian Herbel, Summit, good to talk to you, sir. Many thanks indeed.